It wasn't like I was crafting a plan to rob a bank where I knew that at this time I'm going to do this and then at this other time I'm going to do the other thing. I think that a deeper, darker part of me, a part that doesn't express itself in articulate words, I think it knew what it was going to do and I understand that I'm completely depersonalizing a part of my own mind right now. But I think I understood in an intuitive way that I was going to do something. I was caught up in a current and I was just being swept along. He said, it wasn't like I was creating a plan to rob a bank, except that's exactly what he did. He had a plan. He had been planning for a long period of time. The babysitter didn't just leave. He, he coerced the babysitter to leave because he needed the babysitter gone in order to put his plan into action. It was Super Bowl Sunday. He knew his mother had to work late. He knew he would be alone with his little sister if he could get rid of the babysitter. There was always a plan. Yeah. Kissy sister. Emma loves her big brother. Say hello. These are my children. At the time of the murder, Charity was working in a restaurant while studying for a master's in education. She was a single mother but her family were well off and her children had a comfortable upbringing. I said, stop a minute. Y'all are so serious. They seemed like a normal family to me. He was a good big brother. Uh, I remember hearing that he'd help her pick out her outfit. Um, she very much would depend on him for fashion. If you were gonna stereotype him, he sort of seemed like a skateboarder kid. Nobody that I'm aware of said, hey, by the way, I think, I think Paris is a psychopath. His teachers didn't recognize it. You know, teachers spend more time with a child than most parents do. Once the babysitter had left, there was just you and Ella in the house, and she was asleep at that stage. Is that right? And you take a large knife, and you go into her room, and you stab her twice at the start of this process. When that happened, you could have saved her. You could have called the 911, the emergency services. That moment is very interesting to me about the calculation you made then to continue when you had hesitated and could have spared her. I, re I remember that. And I remember that it was like I was struggling with myself. And this isn't meant to suggest that I hear voices or that I'm crazy or anything, but it's almost like one part of me was the part of me that knew what I was doing was wrong. It was the part that loved my sister and would have turned the world upside down for her. And the other part was the wounded, twisted, dark part, the part that had been in pain for so long and wanted misery loves company. It was the part of me that wanted to cause pain, to take the pain I had been feeling and give it to someone else. And I remember that even during the time that I was stabbing her, I was struggling with myself to stop. But I just didn't struggle hard enough. I, I didn't, I didn't put up a good enough fight against myself. And I remember thinking once I had started that it was too late, I couldn't stop. I remember thinking that I have to see it through to the end. There will be people who watch this who'll be astonished that you would want to have anything to do with him, given that he killed your beautiful little girl. What do you say to people who are astonished? Well, he's my son, and as a parent, I always have believed that you give your children unconditional love. And I'm also the parent of a person who obviously has a mental health issue, 